church say amen. amen. We've had a time already this morning. Amen. amen. I'm not going to take away from what the Spirit has already brought in this house. It's God's house. We ought to act like it's His house. Amen. And we came here to praise Him, as Walter has said, and what we've tried to do in our own personal way. But before I go any further, just let me recognize those who have join uh, me to help celebrate celebrate Victoria's uh, retirement. All the family, those friends that have traveled, those that we asked to come today. Would y'all just stand where you are right quick? Everybody, quickly, right. quickly. <laughs> Amen. And thank you for that. I'm thankful to Brother Crenshaw. Uh, he, he told me he was going to do this, and I, I want to be obedient. Right? Right, Dwayne? <laughs> I want to be obedient, but I appreciate it. Just um, a word. I'm, I'm going to be in Amarillo, Texas this weekend, and I'm going to be speaking there uh, with the church. So I just want to take an excerpt out of the text, and hopefully it'll bless you. Has anybody ever felt like um, you you have no worth, anybody? Gone? At some point in, in your life, at some point in our lives, all of us have felt like we didn't have some sense of worth. Circumstances uh, happen uh, in our lives. People say bad things about you. Uh, amen, say amen. People will not treat you right, but treat you less than what God has made you to be. And, and when they do that, because of our the makeup of our corporate being, uh, there's a part of our corporate being called the soul. And the soul is the seat of our emotions. And when these things happen, sometimes our emotions just get out of whack and we forget who we really are. We are God's children. We are no less than what he has made us to be, but because of our emotions, sometimes we uh, cause ourselves to feel less because of what's happening around us. Now, I said this, uh, I said that to say this. Over in Romans chapter 1, in verse number 16, one of the most uh, popular texts in the Bible, Paul talking to the Roman church as he has encouraged them. Uh, in verse number 15, he says, So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel. Somebody say, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Yes, to you who, at, who are at Rome. Yeah. But it's in verse number 16 where I just want to drop a nugget for you this morning. I'm going to let the preacher do what he does. And, and that preaching to Rome, what he wanted to say to them was, I am not ashamed. What are you not ashamed of? Uh, sometimes people will shame you. Sometimes circumstances will shame you. Sometimes the houses that we live in will shame us. Sometimes the clothes that we have might shame us. But, but Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation uh, for everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And all I want to say to you this morning is, if whatever state of shame you've been through, forget about it. Because if you, if you are tied to the gospel, if you are saved in Jesus Christ, if the Lord has washed away your sin, if God has taken away the stain of sin and death out of your life, there is no sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We don't have a reason to be ashamed because it's through the blood of Jesus, by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that today we can all say we have, we have, God bless you. Yeah. Uh, 
one was going to uh, preach. renewed 
like to eat. You got to read some more of that when you go home. But let me read a few more verses. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. Somebody ought to help me right now. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. I'm so glad. Slow to anger, abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. So I'm glad that I read that he's slow to anger. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Somebody ought to say thank you. Lord. For us, the heavens high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And that's a verse that's going to figure heavily into what we want to emphasize. Verse 13, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. And when I read that, uh, Corey, I thought about your grandfather who in his prayer used to always pray, remember that we're but dust. For as for man, his days are like grass, and the flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from Y'all go help me? It's from everlasting to everlasting. On those who fear him and his righteousness, children's children, to such as keep his covenants and to those who remember his commandments to do them. And then, and then I heard Brother Blair talk about uh, to, that, that, that we remember when we leave here to do What's in this word? Right. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord. You his angels who yes. excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord. All you his hosts. You ministers of his, who do his pleasure, closes this like he closes a song. He says, bless the Lord. He opened it with what? Bless the Lord. He closes it with, bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord. Two points. Praise or bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, he says, bless his holy name. Praise to God begins with knowing his name. He says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And uh, one of the things that the preacher said is, that's part of our corporate being. All right. uh -huh. It is our innermost being. Yeah. When I praise him, I want to praise him with my innermost being. Yeah. My spirit is the seat of my intellect, right. but my soul is the seat of my emotion. That's why when I come to praise him, uh, I understand intellectually what's going on, right. but I want to feel something right. in my soul. Right. 
And if you are in a worship service where you don't personally feel something, you ought to investigate not the singers and not the preacher. Investigate where you are in terms of your connection with the one that you worship. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I want your soul to bless him. But it's personal to me. So one of the things I want to, you know, point number one, number two, whichever point it is, I want to bless the Lord. I want to bless the Lord, and I want it to be personal. And so what I want you to your takeaway is, is my worship personal? When it's personal, I'm not looking around. I'm not focused on her or on him. I love what they did in what he did in the call to worship. He read from Revelation yes. chapter 4, yes. where John begins to weep. Yes. And he's weeping because there is no one worthy to open the book. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Nobody worthy to open the scroll. They look in heaven, they look on the earth, they look under the earth. Nobody worthy to open the book. John begins to cry. One of the elders says, John, don't weep. There is a lion out of Judah. There is somebody worthy. Somebody ought to say, somebody is worthy to open the book. John turns around expecting to see a man, but he turns around and he sees a lamb. When you come to worship, spiritual worship, what you want to see, the one you want to focus on is see the lamb. Hear the, hear the, the singing, but see the lamb. Yes. Embrace friends and loved ones, but see the lamb. You, you, you remember things that have happened to you this week. Somebody buried a loved one. Somebody went through some trial and some tribulation. Have you ever been there? Have you ever had, when it looks like nothing was going right? When it looks like everything became overwhelming? Uh, have, have you cried? Have you wept? Have you looked good on the outside? But inside, stuff was going on. Sometimes you hate for them to ask how you do it because you don't want to lie. How you doing? Wish you wouldn't ask me because you don't have time for me to tell you how I'm doing. Somebody woke up sick this morning. Yeah. Uh, Maybelline Jackson, dear friend of mine, uh, is hospitalized this morning. Uh, about with vertigo. I understand a little something about vertigo because my life partner, even this morning, I thought she got up and had to lay that. Down. You ever got up and had to lay that down? Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm not on nobody's street over here.
the name that Abraham gave in the book of Genesis. Abraham was asked by God, leave your folks and come to a place where I'm going to show you. Now we would say, well, show me first. And if I like it, I'll go. There's certain, there's certain states I don't want to move to. Now, you, now, now, if you're talking about California, where it's good weather, Florida, uh, but uh, I, I don't know the name of no place. So. Uh, but he said, Abraham, I want you to leave your folks, leave your mother and father, and come follow me, a place where I'm going to show you. Can you imagine him saying, man, I don't have a job there. I don't have employment. How am I going to take care of of my family. But when God says, come on, you ought to come on. But you got to learn how to do that. Is that right? And so Abraham said, he, you don't have to be to me the God who provides. What's that name, preacher? Jehovah Jehovah. Yeah. The God who supplies all of my needs. When I think about where I'm going to live or what I'm going to be doing, I know that when I'm doing what God wants me to do, he will, he will supply. He will provide all of us. So my praise of him begins with understanding his name is Jehovah Jireh. He's the God who supplies have you ever been there? Yeah. Yeah. Is there something you couldn't take care of yeah. on your own? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. oh, man, right. Something you could not deal with on your own? Yeah. Some trouble you got yourself into and you didn't know how to get out of it? You couldn't rely on mama. You couldn't rely on daddy. You can't rely on your job. You can't rely on your friends. You can't find the pastor. Sometimes you gotta, and that's when God is showing you. You, you cannot rely on man, but you can always rely on God. He's the God who supplies. So when I worship Him, when I praise Him, I'm praising His. Holy name. I remember Hagar from Genesis 16. Uh, through no fault of her own, got pregnant by Abraham. And he already had a wife. It's in the Bible. I mean, look at me. His, his wife did not believe God's promises. Anybody remember this? God said to Sarah, you're going to have a child. Sometimes God makes some promises that are hard to believe. But if God promises you, God can do what he said he would do. So she said, I'm going to have to give God some help. That's when we get in trouble. God said he'll do something. You say, well, no, I don't believe you can do that. Let me help you. That's what Sarah said. Sarah said, Abraham, come on. It's all right if you go in to my handmaid. Now, go in to her was a sexual connotation. And so Abraham goes in to Hagar. She gets pregnant. They have a boy named Ishmael. Later on, Sarah realizes that God is true to what he said. And she has a son. His, he was the child of promise. His name was Isaac. Sarah sees Isaac and Ishmael playing together. And you know how boys are. 
me get back over here, man. Yeah, now, boys are, they got the plan, and she got jealous of the two boys, told Abraham. Now, she the one. She the one. Told him that. Now, you got what you wanted. Now, you don't want it. Have you ever wanted something? Let me say a couple more things, and I'm through. What we gonna sing? 
who heals right. all of our diseases. Yeah. Number yeah. three, he redeems your life from destruction. Mm. You're here this morning. Maybe you came here for the purpose of redemption. Mm. Because more than a physical disease, we got a sin problem. Yeah. We need somebody who can do something for that that doctors cannot do. Let me, let me speak against the background of that music. It redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness yes. and tender mercies, satisfies your mouth with good things. Yeah. So that your mouth is renewed like the angels. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. When he says he made known, to Moses, he let them know his proper name. He said, Moses, you go down to Egypt. I'm going to show you how I'm going to deal with Pharaoh. You tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Aren't you glad you got somebody who can say to your enemy, leave him alone. Let my people go. Moses said, well, who shall I tell him to send? When I, when I go stand before him, and he asked me, what your name is? <laughs> what am I going to tell him? And he discloses his proper name. See, every now and then, that's the way you got to look at it. That's the way you got to talk to him. He said, you tell him. I am. Isn't that all right? Yeah. I'm the God yes, yes. of your father. I'm the God that's going to lead you with a mighty hand out of the land of Egypt. I am. And somebody today needs to leave here calling God by his proper name. He came here to praise him with his proper name. Even God said, I am. What do you need? What do you need? I am. You need a healer? I am. You need a way maker? I am. Yes, sir. Yeah. You need a provider? I am. Yeah. You need somebody who brings a peace? Pastor. Yes. I am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I praise him because of his name. Yes, sir. And I praise him individually because of what he's done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the kind of God you need. Yes, sir. Come to him by faith. That's it.
Thank you. 